Hey guys, how's it going today? I want to remind us about the Great Commission, or you can say the Great Commissions of the Believer, the things that we are all called to do. That's why it's called a Great Commission. There's some things that every Christian has to partake in in the Kingdom of God. It's an inheritance and it's also a responsibility. One of those things is prayer. Another one of those things is soul winning. So let's start with prayer. The scripture tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, pray without season. This is talking to the church of Thessalonica, but it's applying to us because the scripture is revealed to us in that scripture, in that specific place. And also in Luke 18, 1, it says men ought always to pray and not to faint. And then it tells you a story about a woman and a judge and a wicked person that was trying to cause the woman to be troubled. And the woman had to go cry to the judge repeatedly over and over and over again. That's the place of repetition in prayer. There's a place for that. There's a place where repetition becomes religious. There's a place where it's necessary. That's why Jesus cried when he was about to die. He said the same thing over and over and over again. He said, Father, if it be your will, take this cup away from me. But if it's not, let your will be done. That's the place of repetition. When he prayed earnestly and his sweat became like drips of blood. When he experienced hematohydrosis, that's basically what he experienced when his sweat became like thick drops of blood. So that's the place of repetition with prayer. And that's the place of everyone praying because 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 says, I exhort therefore that prayer, supplication, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all men. And it's for all men, but it's from all men rather also because in the Old Testament, God would call specific people and basically ask them to be people that would intercede for the land because at that time the holy spirit had not been administered to everybody but once the upper room experience happened then the holy spirit becomes an indwelling then he becomes an unction that unction can reveal himself in many dimensions and one of the most important dimensions he will reveal himself in is in your prayer life and also we are basically all called to serve god in one way or another we are all called to be priests and kings for god also that's what revelation chapter 1 verse 6 says so you can add that to the list as well so we have so far prayer so winning priests and kings for God. That means that we are all called to live a life of consecration, a life of holiness, a life of purity. The scripture says in Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So holiness is a prerogative, it's a priority. It's a prerequisite thing that you need in order to see God, in order to become a part of the kingdom of God in heaven. So that's gonna be something that will fall into the line of the things that you need to do as a believer. When it comes to soul winning, Matthew chapter 26, chapter 28 rather, verse 19, and Mark chapter 16, verse 15 tell us that go to the world and teach all nations, go to the world and preach the gospel. And then these signs shall follow those that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak in new tongues, they shall take up serpents. If they drink anything, it will not hurt them, that is deadly. And if they lay hands on the sick, the sick will recover. That's Mark 16, verse 15. And basically, the scripture tells us that when Jesus went to the city of gatherings, he casted out thousands of demons from a man. His name was Legion because he had about 2,000 to 6,000 demons in him. And once he did that act, the man became transformed to the point where he went and took decapolis, which means 10 cities. He was able to evangelize to 10 cities. He was able to preach to 10 cities about the kingdom of God. So that's somebody that was just possessed with thousands of demons. As soon as he becomes transformed, he's trying to follow Jesus. But Jesus tells him, no, go out and preach. And he was able to take 10 cities. So we as believers that have more of the advantage, we know more, we have more of the spirit of God that is in us. Or well, let me put it this way, we have experienced the spirit of God in a more convenient manner. So we have to be able to take more cities than the guy that was possessed with thousands of demons. When Jesus met the woman at the well in Mark chapter four, it's actually John chapter four. Basically what happened is he explained to the woman that the water that he's about to give her is not ordinary water. The water that he was going to give her was eternal, but the woman was thinking of physical water. So he kept basically trying to get the woman to see that he's not just a physical being. So he had to prophesy to the woman and tell her a word of knowledge. Knowledge meaning that something that he saw from her past in the spirit about her history with men. She had five men in her past and the one that was she would at that moment was not her husband. The man that she had at that moment was probably somebody else's husband. So she was an adulterer and she was almost basically a prostitute. You can you can definitely say that basically. So basically Jesus told her that because he wanted her to see that he's not an ordinary person. He's not speaking from earth. He's speaking from 
beyond eternity he's saying this water that i have is going to transform your life it's going to make you understand that you don't need to run after other things so that you will not thirst and he's saying that you will worship me in spirit and in truth that you will not just worship me in jerusalem or samaria or wherever you want to go but in spirit and in truth in the spirit realm and also in the physical realm and in the lifestyle of your life in the way that you carry yourself your lifestyle will become something that will reflect the image of god so we are all called to win souls because after that woman heard what jesus said she went out and told people and said come and see a man that has told me everything i have done so basically jesus told her a summary of her life so that's why she was able to preach to people and tell her come and see a man that has shown me everything that i have done so as christians we have to evangelize it's a priority your social media should be an altar for god an altar is a place you make a sacrifice it's not a big stone only you can literally say your car is an altar you can say your room is an altar so your social media platform even though it's on the internet it can be an altar as well you can make your social media in a way that anyone that stumbles upon it will always see jesus christ in one way or another they will not see the carnal things and the flesh only they will not see they will not see carnal things ever or not just only but they will not see that all rather but they will see the holy spirit they will see the truth and the light of christ they will see the ways of god they will see the pathway unto heaven the pathway to salvation when they stumble upon your page you have to make that decision today because that's what's going to help you to win souls passively and not just that you have to be active as well to be able to do the things that will help you to preach to people that you may not know preach to people that you don't really interact with that much and preach to people that may not want to receive the gospel you have to find strategies ways that the holy spirit will download to your mind but he won't give it to you if he sees that you're not even searching for it so we have to be intercessors because basically the scripture tells us that we're always to pray and not to faint and it tells you about a woman so that tells you that in the spirit realm we are all in the category of men but not necessarily in the physical realm that's why we reproduce in the physical realm that's why homosexuality and lesbianism is a sin the scripture tells us about that it causes effemacy it causes effemacy in the scripture in first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 so basically that's a sin but in the spirit realm there's no such thing as genitory organs we are all in the category of men in the spirit realm we are all sons of Christ. We are all sons of Abba. So that means in the spirit realm, we don't reproduce, but we all have the ability to become warriors for the kingdom of God. We have the ability to become great men and women, but not necessarily in the sense of the genitory organs that we have. That's why angels, they don't reproduce. So that scripture where it says the sons of men came down to heaven, it's not necessarily talking about angels. That's a different story. But when it comes to what I'm saying right now, we are all called to do the things of God because when we transform and translate from this corruptible body, we won't have the same operation that we have. So God is already trying to represent that heavenly dimension on earth. He's trying to mirror what he's going to do when we all translate because incense comes with prayers. So when we pray, you are worshiping God at the same time. So we are all called to raise incense for God because he can use those incenses for different purposes. The angels in heaven will mix it with orders and then from there they will pour it out as a vial to the earth and they will be able to use it for the kingdom of god it could just be the earth it could be any territory that god wants to impact he will pour the incense of prayers out and he will use it to impact the territory so you don't know what you're praying for sometimes you can be praying for somebody in russia in china in any punch in the world any part in the world any country in the world that is going through extreme tribulation and suffering and the person is not meant to die at that point in time if they are meant to pass away for the kingdom of god then that's fine but you can be praying for somebody that's going through a hardship that you don't know about the holy spirit can use your tongues for that person and basically intervene for that person's case you can be praying for your friend that you don't know about that's why praying in tongues is very important if you want to learn more about that you can watch my previous videos as well or you can find any videos of our praying in tongues and learn about it ask the holy spirit to give you the gift and try to grow and grow and grow more in it so we have to always learn that prayer supplications thanksgiving and intercessions like the scripture says in first timothy chapter 2 verse 1 is very important for every believer to partake in we are supposed to pray in the scripture in james chapter 5 from verse 13 going down to 16 and 17 it tells you that if any is afflicted let him pray if any is merry let him sing psalms that if you are sick that you should pray and you should also call for the elders of the church to lay hands on you 
and it tells you that Elias was a man of prayer. He prayed seven times for the rain to come back. He wasn't always somebody that the scripture will say he prayed now, but he prayed another time. But basically, the scripture didn't mention every single time he prayed. But at that specific instance, when the rain was supposed to come back, he went to the mountain and he prayed seven times, even though he told Ahab to go eat and drink. So he was using spiritual strategization. He was telling Ahab, the king, the person that was opposing him to go eat and drink while he was eating of the spiritual food of heaven. He was recalibrating himself. He was basically refilling himself with the incense of God. And the incense was also rising from him to heaven. So that incense is what brought the rain back. It, it brought the cloud that was at hand. And basically that hand is what represented the rain that was to come back. So he allowed his enemy to eat, but he went to eat of the things of the spirit. So that's what made him to be able to journey in prayer. So we are all called to pray as believers. It's a lifestyle. We give ourselves to prayer. David said in Psalm 109 verse 4, I will give myself unto prayer. It has to be a lifestyle for you. You cannot let anything come in between your prayer life. The scripture says in Revelation 5 verse 6 to 4, verse 6 to 8, I believe, it tells you that the prayers of the incense, the prayers of the saints are like incense that are filled up in the vials of heaven. So your prayer as a saint is being filled up in heaven. The more you pray, the more it's filled up. And when God fills up his vial, he brings another vial and he fills it up more. So you, you don't ever stop praying. You never stop praying. It's a perpetual continuation. Prayer is something you never stop. I believe even in heaven that prayer is going to be something that we do as a worship to God. Not necessarily to receive requests, but I believe there's going to be a certain type of prayer that we will do in heaven. So that's why it's incense. Anything that is incense to God is very precious. It's basically like a perfume to God. So prayer has a lot of reasons and a lot of uses for God and to God and for the kingdom of God as well as winning souls and as well as the lifestyle of the believer which has to be in the priesthood the scripture says in first peter chapter 2 verse 9 a lot of people know the scripture it says ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood a holy nation and a peculiar people called to shew for the praise of him that has called you from darkness unto his marvelous light so you are a mighty priesthood not just any kind of priesthood because now jesus christ has opened the veil he has come from the place of which we are blinded by the law and he has made himself to become the representation of the law so the law is not abolished but yet we see the law through him so we see the light and we walk in the light so priesthood prayer and soul winning those three things never go away for a believer God bless you. Have a wonderful day.